Hey guys, it's Mike Tarallo with Click. I'm really excited to present Click Cloud Data Integration in this next part in this video series, Transforming Data. In the last video, I talked about Click Cloud Data Integration and the onboard process. And I also shared some information on the Data Movement Gateway, connecting to a on-premise source, and also showing you how to keep the cloud target, in this case it was Snowflake, updated when changes are made. Please review the Click Cloud Data Integration Onboard Data Basic Walkthrough. Video will be available in YouTube, the Click community, as well as Click's internal video site. Now, one of the things I do want to mention is Click Cloud Data Integration is a lot different from our analytics services. There are a lot of moving parts, and these videos that I'm creating are much longer than normal and I encourage you to stay with me to the end because it will answer a lot of your questions and we'll show you how it works and how to do some things. Now keep in mind this is not a substitution for instructor-led training or our online learning, but it will give you a good understanding of how the components work. The other thing I do want to mention is that I'm taking advantage of the chapters that are available, so even though the video might be 25 to 30 minutes long, you can jump to the different sections if necessary. Okay, so let's just jump right into the next part of Click Cloud Data Integration, transforming data. Okay, so in the last video, we created a data project that onboarded data into Snowflake. And we're gonna continue with that process. You're going to see me actually repeat a few steps as well, but we're gonna now perform transformations on columns and on data values, etc., and also output multiple tables and views. So to get started, I'm in the data space that I've already created called Taralo Data Space. I don't have any data projects created. I'm gonna create a new data project. And as mentioned in the first video, data projects are attached to the target platforms that we support at this time. Snowflake, Google BigQuery, Azure Synapse, uh, Databricks, and then you also have the option to write QVD files to the Click Cloud. So here we're just gonna choose Snowflake and I already have my connection defined, so I'm gonna choose that as well. And then give the data project a name and we're gonna call this one transform data video. And then we're gonna click create. Now it's gonna automatically open that data project where we can now start adding what we call data assets. In the last video, we chose onboard data. When you use onboard data, it basically creates a landing data asset and a storage data asset and allows you to connect to the source of your choice. And then transform data has different functionality and so does create data mart. I will create more videos on these as time allows. We're going to work with the transform data today, but since we need a landing and storage data asset anyway, I'm just gonna select onboard data to start. And this one, we'll just call it inventory and stores and click next. And then we choose our data connection. And then just again, to show you the different sources we can connect to, it's also important to understand not every source supports change data capture capabilities. Uh, mostly the on-premise sources for relational databases do. Um, that being said, you saw me create a data movement gateway connection to my SQL in the last video. So we're going to use that, but I did want to show you the other connections available here. We have that connection ready to be chosen and we're going to click next. Okay. So now we're connected to my SQL and we can choose click DI, that's the schema within MySQL, and then we can search for the data that's available. In the last video, I chose one table to keep it simple. Just to show you some of the related functionality, I'm going to choose two tables, inventory and stores, and then add selected data sets, and then click next. We're going to choose replication with current data only, full load and CDC, and I'm going to choose do nothing because when I click finish, I want to show you what it looks like through what we call the pipeline view. 
If I toggle the pipeline view, you can see the tile view of the different assets. I prefer the pipeline view because it shows sort of a lineage. And then we start configuring our different assets. Okay, I call these tasks, you'll hear me use the words tasks, objects, or data assets. They're basically individual programs that perform specific tasks and then are all connected together. Okay, and you'll see more of that as we start to complete this. If you want to zoom in or zoom out, you could use the wheel on your mouse to do so, and then you can grab the canvas with your left mouse button just to drag it. So we're going to go directly into the landing asset first, and I'm just going to change the name here to raw data. The landing asset is basically the task that pulls the data from the source on a uh, scheduled basis, if you will, checks for changes, is constantly updated and loads and lands that data to a location on the target. In this case, a schema that we're gonna call the uh, landing schema. You're gonna see that in a moment as well. And then the other assets will work off of this um, data and then also work off of the other tables and views that are created along the pipeline. So let's open up the landing asset. And it's not too much to do in here. Um, currently, as of the recording of this video, you can't really do any manipulation of columns or um, table names or anything like that. We can do that in the storage step. Uh, but what I did want to bring up here is that we can go into settings. You can see the schema that will be created in Snowflake. I'm just going to keep this simple and we're just going to call this landing. Once again, full load in CDC. Uh, we're not doing anything with uh, binary large objects or anything like that. So I'm just going to uncheck that and leave the rest of the settings default. And that's pretty much it. So now we're going to click prepare. Now what prepare will do is it will create the structure in the cloud platform target, in this case, Snowflake. Now I've recorded a number of videos here and there, and in order to save time, I'm not going to switch back and forth to the different worksheets. I will do that a little bit later. So let me create another object within the pipeline, and then we'll go to Snowflake and see what was created. So right now you can see it says creating artifacts. And now it's ready to run. So when I click the run button, it's now going to take the data directly from MySQL, in this case, the stores and the inventory table data, and it's going to load it into the landing schema into table structures in Snowflake. And once this is running, we can keep track, queued, loading, completed. And you can see the processing tables. Two tables have been completed. We have our full load status. We can see the inventory stores, started, ended, duration, and if there was any error messages. Okay, so that's all you really need to know right now for the landing asset. So now we're going to go back and now we're going to go to the storage asset. Now, a couple other things to point out here is that you'll notice if I click this button here, this ellipsis button, I could open, edit, delete, stop, sync data sets, recreate, store data. Store data is the only task or object that can be performed next after a landing. If we go to the storage data asset, then you'll see we could also do transform data and create data more. And once again, you'll see this. But I do want to show you that there's a certain order of operations uh, when creating this pipeline view. Okay, that being said, we're going to go here and edit the name of this. You can see it also gives uh, default names depending on what you name your data projects and the um, uh, initial tasks. So you're going to want to change these to something more meaningful. I'm going to call this one standardize columns and, and data. And this is basically going to be a little bit more meaningful of a description. And now I'm going to click open. So now within the storage asset or task, you have the ability to set up rules. Now these rules have a scope that can be global where they affect all tables and columns, and you can set up those rules to um, use patterns, for example, to only select certain uh, suffixes or prefixes or whatever the pattern may be. And then you could also set up explicit uh, transformation rules to work on the individual tables or column names or, or data values, and you have expressions to do that. Uh, you also have the ability to filter, uh, add a new column. Um, you have a panel on the bottom where you could actually look at design changes and validation errors. 
So a lot of areas to focus on. As I mentioned, a lot of moving parts. So to keep things simple, the standardized task for the storage asset is basically going to standardize on some of the column names and we're going to add a new column just to keep it simple. So I'm going to add a rule and you can see we could rename the data set. Well, we don't need a rule for that because technically I can go in here and click rename if I wanted to. Um, we'll do that in another step later. So we're just going to click on add rule, uh, rename a column, add a column, drop a column, convert data type, or even replace a column value. So if for some reason we wanted to say rename column, I could say rename the columns with a certain pattern, a certain data set. This is in this case, renaming all the columns and all the data types. And then I have the ability to rename it to something. Okay. In this case, if I just put one, two, three, and I click finish, it's going to rename all the columns one, two, three for each table. And you can see we have a preview here and then the indicator of the global transformation rule. Okay, but that's obviously something we don't want to do, but did want to show you that, you know, the pattern matching and so forth and the changes that you could make. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do this on all tables, all columns, but we're just going to say change case to upper. And then we're going to give the rule a name and we'll just call it upper case columns and click finish. Okay, now you can see that prodcat is now prod cat with capital letters and so forth. Same thing for stores, latitude, and longitude, and city are now uppercase. Okay, just a quick example of applying a global transformation rule. Now we're going to add another rule, and this is going to add a column to all the tables. Okay, source data set pattern match is the percent. And the column name, we'll call it add date time. Target type for the data type is going to be date time. It is not going to be a primary key. And then we are going to open the expression builder. And depending on the target platform, in this case here, I'm using Snowflake, you can take advantage of the dialect specific syntax, functions, and methods to be used within Click Cloud data integration. So in this case, I'm just going to get the current date time stamp. You click extract parameters. There aren't any parameters to test. You'll see that later. So we're just going to click OK. And then we're going to go to next and we're going to name this add date time column. So we just created two global transformation rules. You can see I have the add date time, current timestamp on stores as well as on inventory. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is go to settings. Now settings are going to be uh, organization specific, uh, environment specific. Um, for me, I'm just going to make them simple. So for example, the data asset scheme is where it's going to write this view um, in Snowflake. I'm just going to call it storage. And then the internal schema, I'm just going to call this one internal storage. This is just to keep the text value short. So when I bring up the worksheet interface for our Snowflake, we don't see a bunch of text scrolling across the screen. Now for views, uh, live views is something specific I'm not going to get into right now. It's in the documentation. I'm just going to turn those off so we don't have another view created. And then runtime is the applier interval, in this case, every one minute to check for if there were any changes um, to the source data. In this case, if I inserted some records or uh, updated some records, it's basically going to check that every one minute in this case. And then the rest of these I'll leave default. Okay, that's all we need to do here. So now we're going to click prepare. And the same concept, it's going to now write and create the schemas and the structures for inventory and stores, including the internal tables. And now we're going to click run and now it's going to load that data. So once this is processed and you can see two have been completed and you have the same monitoring capability, you can always switch back between design and monitor using this button in the upper left, but that's been completed. Also, if we wanted to see the difference between full load status, or if there was any other change status, we can look at the drop down here. 
Now I'm going to go into uh, my worksheet. And this is a new worksheet viewer for Snowflake. I'm just going to click refresh. We're going to go to the Toralo sample database. And you're going to see we now have internal storage and we have landing and storage schemas. Okay, if we go to landing, you can see the physical tables. That was the raw data I talked about. Then we go to the storage schema. And if we go to views, you can now see our structure for inventory, all capital column names, including the add date time new column, and the same thing for stores. Okay, so if I just want to do select star from stores, let's take that out here. And then hit play or execute. There is our data. Okay, all capitals, including our date time. Okay, so those are simple global transformation rules on the storage asset. Now let's go back to our pipeline view. And what we're going to do is now add transform data assets, or in this case, think of them as tasks that are going to write out two individual tables because we're now going to add some filters and provide additional expressions. So what I'm going to do is click on this button on the storage data asset, and you're going to see transform data. I'm going to click that. I'm going to give it a name. We're going to call this one digital products. I'm going to uncheck open, click create, click on the storage data asset again, click on transform data. And we're going to call this one analog products. Uncheck open, click create, and you can see the structure that it builds in the pipeline view. So when we go into the transform data assets, we have more capabilities for transforming that data. Okay, so we're going to go into each of these transform tasks. So the first one we'll go into is the digital products. And the first thing I want to do is just select the one table that I'm going to perform the operation on. Okay, as you recall, the storage data asset allowed me to bring in all the tables and work those transformations on those individual tables and columns. But now these, I can work on just one for each transform. Okay. The data sets in this case are now what's coming out of the storage asset. So in this case here, you can see standardized columns, data and inventory, standardized columns and data stores. Well, we want to deal the one with inventory. So I'm going to add that one. Actually, I want to point something out to you. Let me just remove this. When you select your data set, you'll see that you have an option to add an SQL based data set as well. And this will open up a query editor where you can now start writing your dialect specific queries that can be used to produce tables. And these queries can include selecting columns, filtering records, joining tables, etc. Now we're not going to do this in this video, but I did want to point that out to show you that it is available here. Okay. And now for this example, I'm just going to click add, and then I'm going to go to data sets. And I could add more transformation rules globally, but what I would like to do is just rename this because it's not going to be inventory. It's going to be just the digital products. So we're just going to rename inventory to digital. And then we're going to add a filter. And this is basically going to add the where condition to the syntax and the the uh, SQL that is generated when it creates and loads this into Snowflake. So we're going to take product type and we're going to make that equal open quote digital. And then we click extract parameters and then we could test the value here. So for example, if I type in digital, and click test expression, we will get a value of true. If I type in pretty much anything else, we'll get the value of false. Okay. So this is now going to restrict or limit that data just to digital products. That's going to result 
in that target view in Snowflake. Okay, so now we're just gonna go to settings and data asset schema. In this case here, we're gonna call this one reporting because let's just say we're creating the final schema that we'll use for our uh, views or tables for analytics purposes. Again, internal schema, I'm just gonna leave that alone. And then you have the option of choosing materialized or non-materialized. So let me just briefly talk about these options here. The transform task provides the option for how to materialize the output. So a materialized data set is going to create an actual table in the cloud platform, and it'll process the data in those tables based on a schedule. Non-materialized provides the ability to generate the output as a view. So in general, it allows you to choose how the target output is going to be stored and used and allow you to easily determine and apply the correct configuration based on querying and processing needs, which will vary per organization or per particular you know, business solution where this data is going to be needed. Okay, just a quick example. We have the ability to output a table object using custom SQL. Um, you might actually want to generate that as a materialized table because the performance impact um, will be better for consumer queries. But again, this is going to vary depending on organizational needs. For the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to select materialize. You can actually see the table that's being created. Now for runtime, we're going to also do the interval every one minute. So when we process those changes, it'll occur. One other thing I do want to point out Again, I named the data asset schema reporting. We're going to use that same name in the other transform so we can store both tables in that location. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to now click prepare. And similar to like I mentioned with the other tasks, it's going to create that structure now in a new schema called reporting. Okay, ready to run. Switch over to the monitor view, it's processing the tables and the table is completed. Okay, so now for analog products, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna do those same steps. We're gonna select our inventory table, go to data sets, we're going to rename inventory analog. We're going to add our filter for prod type. Run our test. And this time I want to perform a row level transformation that checks the value of analog because what I want to do is just change that product type to discontinued. So I'm going to select the prod type column, create an expression, and we're going to use a function, logical function, if, and then we're going to fill in these parameters here. So we're going to go to columns and you can see here is the Boolean expression. We're basically just going to say if prod type is equal to analog, give it the value discontinued. Else, if there's anything else in there, we'll just say other. Okay, and then we click extract parameters. I'm gonna type in the word analog, test the expression. Discontinued displays. If I type in other, one, two, three, four, five, we'll get the value of other. So there's an inline row level explicit transformation. Next, we'll go to settings. And I want this to be put in the same schema as the digital table. So here we'll choose reporting. I also want this to be a materialized view. And we're going to set the runtime every one minute. Click OK. And then go through the prepare process. 
So hopefully you guys are still with me. As I said a number of times, there's a lot of moving parts. There really is no way of fast tracking this type of video other than probably showing you the input and the output, but you guys want to see how this stuff works. I mean, I'm having fun playing with this, so hopefully you guys will too. All right, so now we have both of our tasks. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the, um, actually let's run it right here and we'll look at the monitoring. You can see the processing, the tables, it's completed. Go back to the pipeline view and now you can see all our individual tasks that are running. All right, so we're almost done. What we're gonna do now is just look at the data that was loaded. And then I'm gonna show you some um, inserts into MySQL. And we're gonna see that information propagate across. So let's go to our worksheet here and let's refresh. And now if you remember, there's our new schema called reporting. And there's our analog table and our digital table. So here we're just going to select from analog. And there are our records that are analog and you can see the prod type is listed as discontinued. Okay. Our transformation rules and our separate tables. And we can do the same thing for digital just type it in and there is our data for digital okay so we separated those individual inventory tables into two separate tables now the fun part so I have a script with a bunch of insert statements here and this is going to insert some records into stores as well as some items into inventory. So I'm just going to copy these. We're going to bring up our MySQL workbench. And we're going to paste them right into this and execute. Okay, so right now you can see on the bottom the rows that were affected. If we just do a quick select row limit from inventory, you can see our new records have been added in here. PS3, PS2, both analog digital products as well as our new store. I believe it's probably at the bottom of the list. There it is, Cybertron in Florida. So we just updated the source data running some SQL statements. And now we're gonna go back to our process and we're gonna wait a minute or two and we're gonna see the changes propagate over, okay? So at this point here, we can go into the final tables and just see the results, or we can go into each of the individual tasks and we can go into monitor and we can look at the individual status. So here, if we look at CDC status, nothing has occurred yet in this case. So we're just gonna be a little bit more patient, wait about a minute and then check it again. Okay, so I'm not sure if you saw it update. Inserts six on inventory and inserts one on stores. Okay, that was the landing task that we checked. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at the storage task. Last batch of changes, inventory and stores six and one. And now we're going to go to digital transform. Last batch of changes, three records. So they had our three digital records. And then we'll go into our analog transform. Look at the last batch of changes. And there are our three records for analog. Now, ultimately, if we go back to our worksheet and we run our selection, we're gonna look for new records. Right now, you can see there's 14 rows. If I hit the execute now, we have 17 rows. So three records have been input and there it is, PS2, Xbox, and PS1. And then we do the same thing for the analog table. 
and there are three new records. Tiger Street Fighter, Motorola X54, and PS3. Okay, so that, my friends, is probably a very light example of utilizing the transformation steps, the global transformation rules, the explicit rules, the transform object, and then also seeing some change data capture taking place as well. Okay, now you would apply this to your specific data modeling needs, if, if you will, um, in your particular target platform. In the next video, we're gonna then talk about the data mart option that you see that comes out of the end of the storage or out of the transform tasks.